Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw a complete reversal of the buying from yesterday. The intraday balance breakout that we saw yesterday completely failed. And at this point, the market is back near yesterday's low. Heading into the open, this uh, 73.75 to 76 quarter is a reference area where it can tell us, uh, you know, if the market's holding below it, then we know that there is sustained and consistent downside pressure on the market. It will just confirm the weakness. But if we reject uh, yesterday's low and we start holding above 73.75 to 76 quarter, uh, then it tells us that the uh, breakdown attempt is being rejected. So it's something to keep an eye on uh, just as a reference point uh, to gauge whether the buyers are stepping in, whether responsive buyers are stepping in yet again, or uh, you know whether there is sustained weakness. Now, in order to go down, we are going to have to see sustained downside momentum. Uh, you know, AD is going to open on a weak note anyway, so it's not really going to be of much value uh, in the you know first 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, but after that, as long as the AD is sliding lower, uh, then there would be potential to test some lower prices. Uh, but on the larger time frames, we are still testing uh, some bigger support, and we are now uh, getting oversold and exhausted again. So in the event that we do continue heading lower, uh, responsive buyers can still be active at the support zones below. But of course, you know, the lower zones at 57, 58, 53, 55, you know, those are the stronger areas of support. But even 64, 67 uh, is still an area where responsive buyers can be active. And, um, you know, we can still get a short term bounce off that zone. Uh, it's just that the sell side heading into today is in firm control. Uh, you know, yesterday, if the market had plunged into 6467, it would have made for a, uh, you know, much more clean long setup. Uh, but today, the difference is that the overnight session has been extremely weak. Um, you know, the broader markets are selling off. You know, China had another uh, pretty weak session. So sell side is in firm control here. So when you are taking a trade at 6467, you know, the first area of decent support, um, you know, you are going against a lot of momentum and the short-term bias, the larger time frame bias. So 64, 67, even though it's a good area, uh, it does call for a bit more caution. The 53 to 55 and 57, 58, those are spots where, uh, you know, the range potential for the day um, on the 24-hour chart would really be exhausted. So, um, you know, we are in a highly volatile and above average volume environment, but even then, 5355 uh, is a spot where uh, you know responsive buyers can certainly be active for a move back into uh, yesterday's low and uh, the 7375 to 76 quarter uh, broken support. So 5355 is still going to be a good spot to consider uh, you know fading on first test um, as long as we're not getting just major major downside momentum. But from a location perspective, it's a decent area for responsive buyers to jump in. On the upside, we have resistance at 84 quarter to 85.75, uh, followed by 90 half to 92 half. And uh, we can look for short setups on any kinds of bounces back towards those areas. So in the event that uh, you know responsive buyers are active off of yesterday's low or 64.67, or even one of the lower support zones, um, and we go back up towards 84 quarter at 85.75 or 90 half to 92 half, and all the resistance zones really above, you know, responsive sellers can defend on first test of pretty much every resistance area, given how weak uh, the overnight session has been. The only time where uh, it would make sense to be a little bit more careful on shorting any of the zones above is if we were getting, uh, you know, price action similar to yesterday morning, where uh, it wasn't just a, you know, normal bounce, but uh, it was a larger time frame uh, participation bounce where it was just fluid price action to the upside, you know, decent momentum to the upside. So, uh, you know, in that situation, uh, it would make sense to be a little more careful. But um, the pre-market resistance, initial resistance, these are good spots for sell side to be active. And, um, you know, we can use those as uh, targets in the event that there is a intraday reversal that takes place. And at the same time, uh, they can serve as good short setups on first test, um, even if it's just for a reaction. 
you know, when the relative volume is as high as it has been for the last several days and, you know, since the beginning of the year, uh, even the intraday swings and rotations can be, you know, easily 7 to 10 points. So even if you're just getting a reaction at those zones, it still makes sense to consider taking the trade. So that's really the context heading into the open, you know, sell side, firm control, but getting quite oversold and exhausted. We have some decent larger time frame support below where buyers can still be active. And for that reason, you know, we do have to be careful on entering short at too aggressive of a price because down here, um, you know, as especially as you head lower, uh, there is still the possibility for the buyers to step in, defend and push the market back into uh, yesterday's range. So those are the main ideas. Let's see if uh, you know the responsive buyers can show up again, and we'll take it from there.